What about the Jesus Revolution? New Hollywood movie that's, that's come out here this month, February of 2023. And uh, interesting things here mo many people do not understand. But this has been in the making for a very long time. This video I did here 13 years ago here on YouTube. It was actually part of an, a DVD that I had put out, uh, one of the documentary DVD I produced many years ago. But in this clip, I show this. It's talking about uh, Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan, that he actually had gone to a meeting back in the 1960s, and they were told about the plans they had for the future to bring in the New World Order uh, that would eventually usher in the Antichrist system. And um, it was a secular man, Dr. Richard Day, that was up giving this, this speech, <clears throat> and he said, do not record this. I don't want anybody to make any notes or anything else. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan, um, unknowing, without the knowledge of Dr. Richard Day, actually was there taking notes. And he came back and he told a lot of it, <clears throat> what was going to happen. Very interesting. If you haven't seen this video, it's just a audio clip mostly. But listen to what he says. It's very interesting how they would change the Bible and that they would change churches. And this is an advertisement. I'm sorry the resolution is really terrible. It's as good as it gets, 240p, um, is as high as it goes on this. <clears throat> but uh, this was a church in uh, Lancaster County where I was from. And um, it says, is this your idea of church? And it shows older people standing around in, a, in their suits and dresses and whatever else. And it's, you know, old time things. That was then, this is now, and you have this integration picture here, old and young, uh, like immodest dress and all the other stuff, women with low necklines and, you know, all the things that the that would be considered immodest in the scriptures. And this is, this is now, this is great, you know, this is new, this is the way we do church now. Keep that in mind as we watch this. And this was 13 years ago, okay, that I did this, and this movement, it's, you know, talking about in the 1960s, they were talking about this, this whole Jesus rock thing and whatever else. Um, they uh, brought in this thing here. <clears throat> Let me show you what this is about. Um, Galatians chapter 1, six, verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. All right. Um, there's another place in scripture where it talks about another Jesus. And this is so important to understand. There's more than one Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> Paul writing to the Corinthians and he says, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. In other words, Paul's saying, I'm worried, because if somebody comes and preaches this false Jesus and another gospel and another spirit, I think you're going to fall for it, is what Paul's saying in that passage. Um, it's very dangerous. A lot of the charismatic people, the, the modern church people, they believe in a Jesus, but it's not the Jesus of the Bible. That's why you have to always go back to the scriptures. Doing that does not make you a Pharisee. Doing that makes you a Bible-believing Christian, being born again, um, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. It's the, it's, and it's the word that was preached unto you. I've done plenty of studies on this if you want to get into the doctrine of it. Again, modern Christians don't care about doctrine. It's all about the experience because they serve the devil. That's what they're doing. But let me just show you this trailer here, this Hollywood movie. I'm going to go through this thing. It's very important. Remember this whole thing here. That was then. This is now. Look at this. Hey, Square. I am not a square. I think we should invite Greg this weekend. What's this weekend? The mountain is high. How are we doing Southern California? Okay, the, the hippie movement was all about rebellion and drug culture and whatever else. It was purely satanic. These people are hippies, rebels against old-fashioned authority. I think these rebels against old-fashioned authority. See, they're going to bring it out there, and they won't tell you why. What was the whole point? What was what were they rebelling against? What was the, they won't get into anything doctrinal. They just appeal to the emotions. Oh, look at this, whatever they're playing the rock music and things, and look at all the 
the stuff that happened from the 1960s up until today. Socialism, communism, and things brought in. And just, they destroyed this nation. This whole movement, this whole satanic movement, breaking down old morals and things like that, getting rid of the, a lot of the new versions of the Bible came in from the 1960s on up. Yeah. And now we have America that it's a, a completely destroyed country. And pretty soon God's going to put an end to this nation. There's going to be a lot of bloodshed. Pure word of prophecy for the future. You can count on it. These kids need help. What they need is a bath. You're passing judgment. Uh, they just need, what they need is a bath. You know, see, they're, they're going to spin it, make it look like, oh, he's an old time guy and whatever else. Hollywood is just so predictable. But people fall for this kind of junk. I used to fall for this kind of stuff when I was into the whole rock and roll CCM type of thing. So any of you people out there that are modern Christians, I was once like you before I got saved. So don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about because I know exactly what you are thinking. Let's continue. Even on people you know nothing about. Maybe that's why your church is so empty. And God will. Maybe that's why your church is so empty. You see? There. You see it? The church is so empty, and now all oh, we are crowded with people here. You see? Let's continue. What's in here brings me a hippie. I'll ask him what it's all about, because I do not understand. His house has a very good vibe. There is an entire generation searching. Slow down, man. Slow down. Just in all the wrong places. If you want to reach my people, you need to speak to them in a language they understand. You need to speak to them in a language they understand. Well, let me just show you what the Bible says about that. Okay? Can we just look and see what the scriptures say instead of our opinions? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If you want to speak to my people. Okay? Verse, we'll start here in verse 13. Go over this way. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Natural man. What is that talking about? It's talking about lost people. They're not redeemed. They're not born again. They don't have the Holy Spirit. The word of God is not written for lost people. It's written for the saved. The gospel's there. You can have that as a lost person. It brings you to repentance. You can get saved. You, be you believe the gospel. Believe what the scriptures say. But you have to be very careful. Well, I don't need the scriptures. I have Jesus. There's another Jesus. I showed you the scripture for it. There's one coming called the Antichrist. He's going to be a perfect counterfeit of what most people believe about Jesus Christ. And I realize this video is not going to reach most of the charismatic lost devils, but I'm hoping that there's a few people out there that were like I once was, really truly looking for the truth in this satanic system. All right? Let me show you another one. The words of Jesus. Okay? Uh, no, no, no. I'm thinking of, thinking of another one there. Johnny, excuse me. I don't have any notes for this study. Just kind of going down through it quickly. <clears throat> um, Jesus says to the Pharisees, Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Very important. And what do they say? They say to him, um, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say not we say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? And that's what people will accuse me of. They'll say the same thing about me, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, a preacher. But there's no fear. So listen, you have to come to me and speak to me, speak to my people in words that they understand, not in the old King James Bible, in other words. 
and you, a lot of the people out there that are lost, they don't even get it. I mean, some of the people in the charismatic movement, this Jesus revolution type of thing, uh, the whole Jesus movement of the 1960s and 70s, some of those people did understand what they were part of because they were witches and occultists. They were doing it on purpose. But there were a lot of innocent people that got roped into it, and they just went along with it because it felt good, and we don't have to have all these rules and fighting against sin and everything else. Salvation without any kind of a changed life. That's the whole thing. If I bring them in, I'm going to lose my job. We can only walk through doors open to us. In your church, that's a door that's shut. Um, well, you know what? The door that's shut is actually Jesus Christ. He is the door, according to John chapter 10. And you think he's going to just open himself up to any kind of sin that comes in? Where are you getting these beliefs from? They're not from the Bible. You see, it's another Jesus. You've probably noticed we have some guests here today. I'd like you to meet my new friends. Welcome. They don't belong here. Half of them aren't even wearing shoes. They're staining the new shag carpet. They need our help. If you feel like you're missing... Uh, it's interesting because um, uh, this whole movement, they come in and they say, uh, oh, that we don't have shoes on and we don't this, and we don't that, you know, uh, and they show the old people complaining about it. Um, just tell you a little story here very quickly. I have an older brother that's into this Jesus movement, this rock and roll stuff and whatever else. I'll show you here some stuff about that in just a minute. But um, he bragged about how going he went to an older church and drove out all the older people. The older people that didn't want to change. Just drive them out. Get rid of them. Let's continue. Misunderstood and judged, you will find forgiveness and freedom right here. That was awesome. Now that door. Freedom right here for what? To sin? Yeah. Is open any time of day. And if there are some who don't like that, well then that door works both ways. All right, Pastor. See? Driving out the older people. Where's this stuff at in Scripture? I mean, if you're doing it the Bible way, wouldn't the older people feel welcome? Honor thy father and mother? Oh, unless they're old fuddy duddies and we just have to get rid of them and kick them out of the church. Think about it. If you're a part of this movement, you are part of a satanic movement. Look at what God does to people that dishonor the elderly. I mean, really, do you really think that God would say, I'm okay with the movement that drives older people away? It's horrible. Let's begin. I was almost done with this, but then you did what nobody else would even dare. This thing that we found feel like I belong. You're going to need a bigger church. You're going to need a bigger church. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they can grow the mega churches. And by the way, did you see that many people would miss this? Um, the dove falling down from heaven, a known Roman Catholic symbol. Huh, yeah. In the end times, the Roman Catholic church would grow. The drums, the rock music, and everything else. Yeah, Jesuit symbol right there. Hmm. The Jesuit uh, system that was founded to bring all people back under the authority of Rome. And so they used rock music and secular things and let's bring all the people together and mm -hmm, get some lost Hollywood actor up there playing the part of a pastor, showing how the whole Jesus movement came in and destroyed all the churches in America. Well, pretty much all of them. The other ones are just you know, government corporations, but that's another story. <laughs> Let me just say this too, by the way, the dove is not a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit descended like as a dove, not as a dove. Very important wording in the King James Bible. The Holy Spirit is not a bird. Okay, very important to understand that. He's a spirit. The bodily shape of the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. All right. Unless you believe in the satanic trinity, then hey, anything goes. Our country is a dark and divided place, but now there's hope and it's spreading. This is your home, and I want you to tell all your friends about it. All 
Um, you know, this film is not yet rated. I'll rate it. It's uh, of the devil. There you go. But uh, just to show you the thing about uh, one other thing I want to mention here, the thing about my brother, my older brother. Here's his band. This is my older brother right here. There he is, right there. Here's his older picture, another picture of uh, back many years ago. Real uh, holy looking thing there. Um, sardon sardonics, no compromise. Uh, okay. Um, yes, he did. He compromised and he went with the world. There he is again, you know, holding up a Bible. <laughs> uh, well, then why aren't you following it? I mean, uh, the Bible says, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. But, but I want to warn about another very uh, satanic little imp, um, John Davis, over in the UK. And I'm going to say some more things about that. But here he says, I didn't know Dung the Slinger. Nice, nice thing there to say about me, about my name. And he, of course, has to take a, a picture of me, a screenshot, just... The guy is so immature. It's like a little child. And because uh, he's not a real man. And wears pink shirts and things. Whatever. And he gets offended at me wearing a flannel shirt. All right. But uh, it takes a picture of me when I was making a point in one of my videos. Only like this. You know. Oh, wow. Wow. Good one there. Um, Tom Denlinger is Dungslinger's brother. How about that? Tom is a lovely Christian who has a great ministry for the Lord compared to his possessed idiot brother who is doing nothing for the Lord and only living in his house, staying away from every human being. Uh, scripture for using the word human being. That's right. You're an effeminate little girl. But uh, he can because of fear. Tom loves the Lord Jesus Christ and the body of Christ. Really? Really, John? And you know that? You know that? Uh, and, and see, John's getting attention now, which is what he craves so much. John sent me so many boxes of stuff. His little uh, thing that he's trying to promote there, his ministry, he thinks he's going to be the next Peter Ruckman or something like that cracks me up um, time for truth uh, if you're giving any support to this guy if you're into this guy at all run away from him he's a very false prophet a radical Trinitarian uh, changed the Word of God in his little ridiculous booklet um, the guy's a Satanist I was kind of having some grace and whatever else do you have any no more discernment than this? I mean, this guy here, my brother, he's he's a good Christian. He's a good Christian. But me, a Bible believer, I'm not a good Christian. My brother that's involved in this exact this whole movement here, the the rock and roll thing, let's bring the electric guitars in, let's have the they drive out the old people. It's my brother's involved in that. You realize how many family issues and fights we've had over this whole thing? I love my brother. I wish he'd you know, get saved, but uh, he's been very wicked. He's caused so much division in my family. I mean, oh, he's getting to you because he's done something personal. No, here's the whole thing. John, do whatever you want. You can attack me. I mean, he attacks me in these stupid little newsletters of his, childish little rants against me, worse than Rational Wiki, a bunch of atheists have done. Weird how a, a Christian would do that. But do whatever you want. You can make try to make a thing here and try to get to me and whatever else. But I'm going to warn the body of Christ about you. Because if you have no more discernment than this, if you can't look up the fact of what my brother does, right there he is, CCM, heavy metal, and that's fine. And then you turn around and you promote Peter Ruckman, you know, and uh, you go to uh, Devil Davis's thing here and there is it can barely see the picture of it right there and uh keith green the satanic guy that he was guy was a totally wicked evil man but and it's funny because oh you're not a real man if you have a beard or something and he has keith green okay yeah and uh but right beside peter ruckman when peter ruckman condemned keith green you see satan has a bunch of little plants out there and they can come along and they can pretend that they're part of the Bible-believing movement. But uh, at the right time, they're going to deceive people and sway them over. And John and his uh, cross-dressing uh, thing that he's married to there, uh, dresses like a man. Um, they're there and they're, oh, we're Bible believers. We're, Bible, we're King James Bible believers. No, he's not. No, he's not. So if you 
are going to be deceived by this thing, then God help you. But, you know, if you have ever been pointed towards this ministry by me, which I did in the past, I apologize and I publicly renounce any connection to this devil right here. I mean, promoting a Christian rock singer just to get at me. So uh, please don't support John Davis this time for truth. They are liars. They are deceivers. Write to him and, told you, uh, and tell him that. Uh, and John, enjoy the video. You know, I'm sure that you feel very proud of yourself now that you got some attention finally with your little nothing uh, false ministry there. So go ahead and keep lying about me too. Um, so, but just, I wanted to put this thing out here uh, just to show again this whole Jesus revolution thing. 13 years ago, I did a video about this, put it out by DVD. So, be careful. Watch out for this whole modern church movement. If you're in it, get out of it. Okay? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.